Hello and welcome to our look ahead to what the papers will be bringing us tomorrow. With me are author Ian Leslie and journalist Nabila Ramdani. Good to have you both here. Thank you for coming in. Tomorrow's front page is then starting with The Independent. It leads on allegations that Britain's electronic listening post, GCHQ, has been gathering data through a secret US spy programme. And it carries a picture from the Queen's visit to the BBC newsroom. The Daily Mail has a story about British patients turning away from the NHS to a private clinic run by Polish doctors. The Daily Express claims that figures showing that half of the UK's exports are to non-European Union countries is proof that we don't need to belong to the EU. The Daily Mirror has Coronation Street actor Bill Roach, who appeared in court today on child sex abuse charges, promising to clear his name. The Daily Telegraph says new figures reveal how much high earners pay towards the welfare state. The Times leads on the claims about GCHQ being able to access data on internet users through that US spying program. So let's begin. Uh, and we'll start with the Times. Um, and the headline is British spies in secret deal to access US online files. And now the focus uh, turning to our government. Who knows what, Ian? Well, yeah, I mean, th the context of this is that it's been revealed by The Guardian this week that uh, the US government has a, a massive surveillance program uh, deal with one of the major phone providers in the US, which means it can look at the data of millions and millions and millions of ordinary people, uh, citizens in the US, without anyone knowing about it. So uh, it's been, that's been leaked to, to, to The Guardian. Uh, the second uh, sort of shoe fell the next day when it turns out uh, the government also has a deal with big internet companies, Google, Facebook, Apple and so on, uh, which allows them to access data on your search history, um, uh, uh, what, you've been, what you've been looking at on the internet, uh, how you use social networks and so on. So it turns out there's this massive sort of surveillance program that we didn't know about um, and uh, it now turns out that the British government is implicated in that too because it's doing a deal with the US uh, uh, to, to see some of that data. So um, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty uh, uh, e extraordinary stuff. Y yes, indeed. And uh, what, is this, what this story is about effectively is the UK ramification of the bigger US intelligence story that you've, you've been explaining, uh, Ian. Uh, effectively, US intelligence um, having access to pictures, uh, emails of private citizens, and it raises questions about uh, to what extent governments are allowed to snoop uh, on their citizens. And, you know, the, the American government has been uh, effectively um, defending its position by uh, stating the, uh, the, the, uh, the imperative of defending, you know, the security of the country, uh, claiming that, you know, they need to spy on, on terrorist activities in, in particular. But there's a fine line between uh, security and indeed uh, privacy. And this story is now coming to the UK and, and the Home Secretary will be uh, facing a grilling as to whether or not uh, um, UK, uh, UK agencies, and, and especially uh, GCHQ, which is a government's eavesdropping agency, has been indeed benefiting from the US uh, intelligence uh, spying programme. It's not entirely clear, is it, from the reports that we're getting, whether this is metadata, the sort of uh, the nuts and bolts of who emailed or texted um, who, at what particular whom, at what particular yeah. time of day and where they were when they did it, or is it the content of those communications? But either way, it appears to have been done in secret. Mm. Either way, uh, it's, mass, it's a massive amount of information to hold uh, or to have access to on, on your citizens without their knowledge. Um, and either way, as you say, to have this program in place and not tell anyone about it mm. is, is pretty extraordinary. Um, so it, it, it is a sort of massive extension of, of government. Power. And, and the sort of longer, the, the historical background of this is, is, is of course Obama, the Obama administration in the US came to power uh, by saying we don't have to make a choice between uh, civil liberties and uh, national security um, and well it turns out that we do and uh, at every point where the Obama administration has had to make that choice it's chosen security over civil, civil liberties, liberties this is the yes. latest example of that so and if the security services indeed are doing this and they are privy to all this information it rather makes the communication data bill uh, or the snoopers charter as other people uh, call it when they don't like it uh, makes that rather redundant doesn't it because this work's already been done for them well absolutely but the reality is that it, it it's uh, a story of you know an indictment of the internet 
internet age, if I may put it that way. You know, we post an awful lot of information knowingly or unknowingly about ourselves on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and companies like Google, Yahoo, or indeed Facebook uh, have been uh, spying on people. And I'm not surprised at all by, by this story, in, in effect. And I think uh, GCHQ is just one of hundreds of organizations who are doing that, and we'll see more stories about that in the next few days, months, and, and years. The trouble is, is that if governments uh, and security services will always take a mile when they're given an inch. So they'll always say, uh, yes, OK, we're looking at this data and, and you didn't know about it. OK, and we admit that. But trust us, it's, it's, it's going to be OK. We're, going, we're using it for the right reasons. And I'm sure their intent you know, is, is good. But when they have the opportunity to look at more data, they tend to want to look at more data and find more ways, whether they are legal or very sort of semi-legal, to, to get more information and more data. So there's a kind of inbuilt momentum to the system. Uh, which means that they, they, they kind of get, gather more and more information on, on their own citizens. As but well even as if it's, this has been done legally in the United States, yeah. it hasn't been done openly, has it? No, no, absolutely. Um, and they would say, you know, the, the reasons for us to, 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 keep, this, uh, to keep this secret. Um, but it's very difficult to justify when, when millions and millions of people's records are at stake to say that, oh, it's very important that we kept, that we, we kept this secret from you. I mean, it starts to get... Yeah, and, and Obama is already point. compared online to any Arab dictator, effectively spying on, on citizens. Well, it's not <laughs> how he came to power. What, no, what it's not. And for, it's, it? quite, it's quite funny that he's, he's currently, when this story broke, he was on a visit to China where they know all about um, <laughs> surveillance of, of, of <laughs> citizens and, and they don't have huge regard for, for civil liberties. Um, and so after criticising them for, on that front, he's now got to go to visit the Chinese Premier and, and, and uh, be rather embarrassed by what's happening on his own doorstep. Let's look at The Independent. And um, it's the one show, says the, says the headline, as the Queen visits the BBC. And there she was, standing just behind <laughs> us there. And, yes. Yes. Uh, as if to, to prove that it really is a newsroom, we bring the monarch in and put her behind the glass to prove that it's not just a, a film on a loop. It really exists. Um, that's one for the showreel for my colleagues, uh, yes. Julian and, and, and Sophie. And um, I understand she crossed the red line. <gasps> Did she? <laughs> where, and apparently she, she turned to somebody at one point and said, I'm not supposed to be standing here, am I? <laughs> she uh, read but the she's signs. the queen. You're the queen. You can stand <laughs> where you like. Yeah. I'm glad that she wasn't wearing a high visibility jacket, which is the other thing that's outlawed <laughs> behind, uh, behind us here. No. But, um, yeah, people very happy. I mean, and the number of my colleagues out there in the newsroom taking photographs of her, it was extraordinary. Really, well, indeed, it? it's yeah. quite historic. I mean, she was um, inaugurating, effectively, these new um, studios, which I understand are the biggest news uh, studios in Europe. Yes, they are. Uh, so uh, it's quite a historical visit. And what it also showed it, is that the Queen is carrying out her public duties while the Duke of Edinburgh is, is not very well. And it just shows how dedicated she is. And uh, interestingly, she has uh, visited Broadcasting House shortly before her coronation 60 years ago already in 1953. So there's a pattern there. Some things have come full <laughs> circle and have changed a little bit. Uh, the Daily Mail. Uh, we'll come to the Queen in a minute because a couple of pictures of her in a rather yeah. contrasting mood. Um, but the main story here is um, cut price private surgeries where you can see a doctor seven days a week. This is patients shunning the NHS to go to a private clinic run by Polish GPs. Um, do the, does the Daily Mail approve or disapprove of this? Well, no. it's hard to tell. It, it's very hard to comment on a story like that because we don't have, you know, many details about it. It's uh, And it's... Uh, in my view, what this story effectively says, it's very easy to overlook the huge contribution uh, uh, that uh, people from around the world and indeed from Eastern Europe uh, are making, uh, are bringing to, to Britain. But um, isn't it saying that, that thank goodness these Polish doctors are here because now you can go and see a GP when it suits you. You have to pay £70 for the privilege of doing it, but the NHS is, you know, are not up to it. So... Thank goodness they're here. I think well, we may be celebrating it. We don't have the inner pages, so we don't know if uh, effectively there's, there's any criticism leveled at the NHS. Uh, the, the, I mean, the front page doesn't say that you know, there's something wrong with the NHS. It's not criticising the NHS uh, openly. It's not saying what's wrong with it. It, it opens up a lot of questions. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I think there's an implicit criticism. Um, because the, 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 the person who manages the clinic mm -hmm. said he realised there was a gap in the market because NHS care was so poor, mm -hmm. um, which the mail quotes, but you know, the fact that it picked that, picks that quote and, and puts it on the front page uh, makes you think that, that part of the point they're making is that perhaps there are gaps in the NHS service or there are parts of the service that don't work very well and therefore the private sector in the, in the, in the form of this, this uh, uh, 
uh, Polish doctor, um, is, is, is stepping in. Because there have been so many reports about out-of-hours care, weekends and mm. evenings, and yeah. which GP surgeries are prepared to, to cover those antisocial yeah. hours. Yes. And, and there's, a, there's a sort of romantic um, uh, idea uh, that, that there was once upon a time, the doctor was always on call. You could call him at 4 a.m. He'd just pack up his case and he'd sort of <laughs> trundle around and see you and say, hello, how are you doing? Um, uh, you know, he knew, knew your name and so on. And, and whilst I think the NHS is keen to, to, to keep some sort of relationship between, between GPs, and we'll get that back, between GPs and the community, um, you know, that's never going to happen. You can't, you can't run a, a, a service on that basis. Um, I thought that, that was rather, you know, a praise about. to how dedicated foreign workers are and how bit, impressive. You know. <laughs> Perhaps page yeah. six will tell us when it comes in. <laughs> Let's look at the Queen. There she is looking alone with her thoughts, says the Daily Mail. If we can just show that picture just for a second. Pensive, says the um, description. The Queen on the visit to uh, the BBC as Prince Philip underwent abdominal surgery not so far away at the London Clinic. Let's move swiftly on, though, to the Daily Express, which picks a completely different picture of the Queen, smiling at the BBC's headquarters. The show must go on. The Queen puts on a brave face as Philip has an operation. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? The picture selection. I think this is great. I mean, I, I think it's, it's such a, it's so revealing of the way we uh, our relationship with the monarchy, and particularly with the Queen, um, because she is so uh, closed lips. Because she said says very little, she gives very little away. She's very mm. dignified. Um, then what we do is we project <laughs> onto her whatever we want to project onto her because we don't know. To, we're not used to people being like that we're anymore, are we? Like well, everyone not spills everything all the time, yeah, every minute yeah. of the day. And I have to say that even though France is, is a republic, they're very much impressed by the Queen precisely oh. because there are not many, you know, if at all, negative stories about her. And she managed to keep a very dignified profile uh, throughout. And, and, uh, and so there was an awful lot of uh, interest in, in, in Queen's stories recently. But uh, the picture where she looks sad, I think it was when she attended a, a, a live performance in the Radio <laughs> 1 studio. Perhaps and it might be <laughs> that she was not too impressed by, by, by the Why um, do we put her through this? It's she gave one clap sadistic. at the end of she the has, performance. She which has was to become inscrutable over the, the years. There was, she? There was, <laughs> I saw somebody <laughs> reporting on it and sort of unintentionally they, they made me laugh when they said the Queen sat through this performance and at times she appeared to enjoy it. Was it at times? She <laughs> <laughs> at, we all feel at, like that, at the time surely. it ended, perhaps. Sure. But, yeah. um, I'm going to move on just quickly to the Telegraph. Revealed how much you pay towards benefits. This story says that middle class professionals typically pay more than £200,000 towards Britain's welfare bill during their working lives, twice as much as they contribute to the NHS. Official figures disclosed today. I mean, what's the point of this? That people who earn more pay in more? Yeah. No. Well, uh, it, it's hard to understand what's, what's the point of this story. Uh, are the middle classes doing well and hence contributing more? If, if that's the case, that's a good story then. I mean, good news for the middle classes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think part of this is about the universality of benefits, which is a big subject of political debate at the moment. Ed Miliband made a big speech on it uh, earlier in the week. Um, and whether or not we should all contribute to, to uh, and, and receive uh, mm. universal benefits. I think Come on, quickly. <laughs> a, 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 some criticism level that the middle class is usually at, that they're better informed about how the system work and, uh, works and, and hence can exploit it better. So. And this is how much it's costing them, so they might encourage them to do that all the more, <laughs> you don't know. Um, that's all we have time for this hour, though. Thank you to Ian and to Nabila. We're very keen, you see. We want to just keep talking. But we'll be back at half past 11 um, with another look at the stories making the front pages tomorrow. Stay with us here on BBC News. Coming up next, it's Sports Day.